Hey guys, we get a lot of questions at the website about what to do with the air pressure with your gun and what pressure should I be set at and what should I be spraying and how. But a lot of times we find that it's not the pressure of the gun for what you're spraying. A lot of times it's the pressure at the wall and the volume of the air that's available to the gun. So we thought we'd take some time to talk about that. Tony, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no problem. What we see many times out in the shops are, uh, especially where they're maybe painting out in an open shop or priming uh, with a prep deck. So they may just have a prep deck, but not necessarily have a regulator there to control pressure. Or you go in the paint booth and all they have is a fitting on the wall. Or they have a regulator that's pinned at 140 pounds, um, and they're going to paint from that. Now, of course, on the spray guns, we have either a digital gauge built in, or you can run a regulator at the base of it. But what happens when you do that, when you restrict that down, start turning that micrometer down, it's just open, closing the hole to be a pretty small hole. And when you have to do that, what ends up happening with that gun is when you make that hole smaller, whether it's on a regulator or it's on the air micrometer itself, the air speed to get the pressure that you need to the front of the gun just increases too much. So now I have a huge velocity of air going through that small hole because this gun, if it's an HVLP gun, I need 15 CFM. If it's an RP, I need 10 CFM. But to get that volume of air that I need to the front of the spray gun through a smaller hole, the velocity has to go faster. And when that speeds up, it blows past the horns, and it actually blows past the paint that's coming out of the fluid tip too quickly. And if it's, that velocity is going too fast, your air cap does not have time to atomize it properly. So our horns on this gun and our center of our air cap create what the fan shape is. But if it's going too fast, you may see little bands that you'll see coming off the edge of the fan. When you're trying to spray base coat with that, if you're trying to spray a metallic, you could see uh, blotchiness or you could see little stripes that are forming in it. If you're trying to spray clear coat like that you could see where you're getting maybe a thin spot in the center of the fan or different areas are getting wetter or thinner uh, and it affects your millage or you may have a dry too dry of a condition so uh, when you spray clear. So what we always recommend is to leave your air micrometer as close to open as possible and just adjust at the wall. You've, if you've got a regulator at the wall that you can control your pressure with, I can set that pressure closer to what my operating pressure should be. So if I need, on a clear coat gun, if I'm gonna spray with this RP4000, if I'm gonna shoot clear coat, I, with this gun I can spray a little lower. I might spray at 26 pounds, but if I've got 70 coming to it and I cheat it down, I'm gonna have the problems we talked about. But if I leave this open and instead of setting it at 26 that I'm gonna spray with, I leave it at 30. Mm -hmm. um, now I can adjust a little bit on that and that way as I'm painting down the side of a car, if I do lose a little pressure, I have a little room to open it up, but I'm not closing off that air micrometer. Now I guess the better maybe give a, a little bit of an idea of what how that happens. It's no different than if you were trying to, with that small hole running through here, if you were trying to breathe through that little coffee straw. Coffee straw. If, you, if you took that thing and tried to breathe through that for four or five minutes, uh, you'd, you'd turn purple. <laughs> that's you know that's I mean? next to impossible. I mean, you can get air through it, but you have to pull really hard on that to get the, the air through it. But if you take a milk straw or a shake right. straw that you get, you can breathe and it's absolutely easy to breathe. Right. And that's the same thing with a spray gun. Um, when we take these fittings, when we use high flow fittings, it opens up so that air can travel through in a velocity, or not with a low velocity, but with a high volume. If I use the smaller fittings, and this is one of the better examples of a small fitting, right. but there's also the Lincoln fittings that have the real long neck on them that are real thin, um, that will literally slip inside of a high flow. If I do that, the problem we see is airspeed has to increase to go through this. And so you can do everything right in your paintwork and have a poor paint job Maybe your clear's not laying down well, your base coat's not laying down well, simply because of the fittings you chose. Now we go backwards from that, we can look through your whole system at airlines and different things. If you've got restrictive fittings in an airline, um, that can cause problems. But for the most part, at the shop, put high flow fittings on to your spray gun, adjust your pressure at the wall, down to close to your operating pressure, and then micro adjust with the air micrometer. So with a little bit more, we can show you on, an air, on a uh, cutaway version, what that air micrometer does. That little air micrometer opens and closes this valve. And when I, when I open that valve, air comes into the handle and it blows up through the hole in the bottom of that air micrometer. And then it goes through the spray gun. And when I pull the trigger, it opens up this packing to slide back and it opens that air passage to the front of the gun. Now on our digital gauges, we also have a secondary air passage right here. Mm -hmm. that allows that air pressure to go back down into the digital gauge. So when I pull the trigger and it opens, slides that 240 packing back, it allows the air pressure, the same air pressure that's going to the front of the gun is going to my gauge so I have an accurate reading. 
but if I'm if I'm cheating this way down and you'll see here when I turn this sideways all of a sudden you can see that hole opening right, right. and that's a perfect fitting for our straw example that we were given a yeah. while ago yeah but that yeah. now is turned sideways and now that's not aimed at the tube that through the gun it's actually sideways and the gun is covering it so I'm only going to have a corner or, or just a small portion of that uh, hole open and so it restricts the air it has to go faster through the gun to get the volume that that gun's needing and it causes the paint problems we talked about so it's really important to keep this as far or as close to open as possible now in addition to the paint problems of like you know bad lays of the base and the clear it can also cause some use issues with product as well if I'm overriding the horns I may be using too much too little product material affecting profitability in a way well one of the other things that happens is if I'm using too much air and it's over drying the base coat yeah of course it's going to lay down coarse lay down with texture clear coats the same way if i'm spraying that and i have too much pressure and it's over drying it many times you'll see where that now they're slowing down and flooding more clear on to let the product flow and now i'm way over using the material i need so um i think the last thing coupled with having the air pressure set correctly many people think that they need to use, you know, we've always recommended on here on an HVLP spray gun like this one, it says max pressure 29 pounds. On an RP, it says max pressure 32. But what the great thing about these new 4000s is we do not have to use that much air, and in many cases, it's detrimental. Um, we have to prove it that at that pressure, we get above the transfer efficiency required by South Coast Air Quality Management District and we meet all the guidelines for the EPA. So that's why we set that high pressure. Mm -hmm. But we can use these guns, if I'm spraying base, I'm gonna shoot it with this 4000 at maybe 25 PSI to start with. If I'm gonna shoot clear with this gun, I'm gonna shoot with an RP at about 26. And that's about where I start. When it gets hotter and you've got a real hot climate, especially when we get into desert conditions where it's hot and dry, I may turn that down to 24 pounds. Uh, and my base gun down to 24, 23 PSI so that it wets up. But when you do that, you also have to remember with these guns not to spray back at the 8 to 10 inches that maybe many people were taught years ago. Um, with this gun, when I plug that in to air, I want to move that in till I hit a wall of air pressure. So if I'll set this gun at 26 pounds, pull the trigger with air and move in till I feel that wall, you're going to notice it's right about that 5 between five and six inch range, and that's the ideal spot to paint. And where you feel that wall of pressure is where your atomization energy is the perfect area. Is on the front of this fluid tip, we have a brake plate that's a round disc, and that round disc lets the air hit the backside of that round disc and curve around that smooth round disc and blow through the air cap without turbulence. So it takes all the turbulence out and it squeezes the air out through the horns and through the center of that air cap in a very soft manner. So I can get in closer now. I'm not gonna drive solvent or water into the base coat. I'm not gonna drive solvent into the clear coat like it used to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a great way of getting close to the panel. And the closer I spray to that panel, the faster my work speed is. Also, the higher my transfer efficiency is, the finer my atomization is. So everything improves. I cut my material losses. Everything improves. All right. So guys, there you go. Using the right air pressure at the wall, getting the right uh, feed and volume and flow to the gun, and getting it at the right distance to the car are critical, sometimes more critical to the performance of necessarily looking at the tech sheet and going, I must be spraying at this specific you know, rate of pressure for that paint. It'll improve your performance. It'll improve the throughput in the shop. It'll improve your profitability on paint materials. Thank you.